If you're new to a darkroom and you don't know whether to get a diffusion enlarger or a condenser enlarger, today I'm going to show you what the differences are. Now we're not going to take apart a couple of different machines to see what the actual construction differences are. I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens inside the enlarger in just a moment. But what we're going to do instead is make some prints with both types of lights from the same negative to see what the actual image differences are. Now a diffusion enlarger is like my color enlarger back here. The lights shine into a white styrofoam box, it bounces around inside, and then filters through a white piece of plexiglass over the negative. And that causes the light to scatter in all directions as it goes through the negative. So when light passes through the film, it's not just directional, it's at all kinds of angles. So it creates a nice softer looking print when it comes to edges and dust and so forth because the light can wrap around dust uh, as opposed to just being blocked by it. It's a little bit more like a contact print in terms of tonality. A condenser is constructed a little bit differently. There's one or two lenses between the light bulb and the film. And these lenses focus the light into a column that shines straight down onto the negative. Now this causes the light to act a little bit uh, like a binary system. It is either blocked by the film or it's not. It is not going to come at oblique angles around the film grain to create uh, a little bit softer edge. So this creates the appearance of sharper edges in the print. It also has the unfortunate uh, coincidence of making dust just stand out. So it's, uh, it takes a little bit more spotting of your print in the end. And we're going to look at that because I'm not going to clean my negative off beforehand so we can see what kind of dust uh, we get and how that looks. So I give you an idea. So these are not going to be clean, uh, fantastic prints. It's just to show you the difference. So right now I've got my diffusion head on there. I'm going to expose a print with a two filter, a double zero filter, and a five filter so that we can see what contrast range we get from standard to very low to very high. Then with the same negative, we're going to replace the diffusion head with a condenser head. Then we're going to make the same three prints, a two filter, a double zero, and a five filter. And we're going to compare those side by side. And then just to be thorough, Kodak uh, and other film manufacturers will tell you that their development time charts are intended for a diffusion enlarger. So if you use a condenser enlarger to reduce your film development, that has the effect of lowering the contrast. So we should, right from the beginning, understand that a condenser is going to uh, create uh, apparent visual contrast. So we're going to take the same shot and I developed it for about 15% less time. And we're going to see how that prints under the condenser and compare that to both the original negative with both types of lights. So without any more delay, let's go ahead and take a look at those prints. All right, here is the diffusion enlarger grade two or number two filter. Let's find the, uh, let's find the condenser. All right, here we go. Okay, so here's the condenser version. So immediately we can see more contrast. Sorry, my light's falling off a little bit here. Although this is a little darker, um, I'm getting a bit of fall off on my video light. So forgive that, but we can really see the difference here in the sky and the clouds. Now, it may seem like this whole thing is printed a little bit darker. It is not. My main value would be the high values of these clouds back here. And that's what I was looking to match. 
So everything falls from that as the reference point. So you can see I've got a bit more contrast here than here. Um, this one does look relatively flat, which it is because using the zone system type um, lower development, I developed this for less time, so my highlights didn't blow out. So here we can see it does create quite a bit more contrast. We also get some sharper dust here. Um, I do have dust spots on the diffusion, but the edges of the dust spots are softer and they're not quite as pure white. But here they're very crisp, sharp edged, and, um, and quite blank. So that's one big difference right there, uh, just in that. But of course the contrast itself. As far as sharpness goes, maybe it appears slightly sharper on the grass uh, in certain areas of high contrast, but that's more of a um, an effect, kind of like an unsharp mask. The edges have slightly higher contrast from that collimated light, and it gives the appearance of higher sharpness than this, um, since this is scattered light, and that's very directional. But that's about it. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the um, at the double zero filters. All right, as expected with the double zero, we're gonna have much lower contrast. Again, this portion is the most important highlight. Sorry, this does look a little bit darker, but again, that's more video uh, light fall off. Uh, I'm kind of reaching the edge of what the video light can show. But here in the darkroom, they, the highlights here are the same. Um, we are getting, again, slightly higher contrast here. I've got a little bit more tonal separation in the grass than I do here, um, as well as the clouds. But the separation between sky and clouds is about the same. Um, so, just as an example. Okay, not much to say about that. Let's go ahead and look at the fives. Here we go. Uh, the fives. So, the... Condenser and larger definitely definitely printed deeper blacks. Well, not deeper blacks, just higher contrast. So more things showed up as black as opposed to here. I mean, this is a pretty dramatic difference between the two. Again, this area is about the same. It doesn't quite look the same here on the monitor I'm looking at, but in the dark room, this portion and this portion are equal. Let's see if we can get them a little closer together to, uh, to show that. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Sorry, this just has a lot of fall off. So you can see these highlights are about the same, but then just the way the shadows are separated are quite a bit. In fact, my blacks are blocking up on the condenser, whereas they're open here in the diffuser. So uh, condenser clearly printing higher contrast, particularly noted with the high contrast filter. Um, so I would say, uh, if you definitely need some added contrast and a negative, switching to a condenser and larger will get it there. As far as sharpness goes, at this point, they're about equally sharp. I don't see a whole lot of difference, but because we went up in contrast, that contrast change that gives the apparent sharpness, um, is more uh, evident in both of them. Okay, so now what I wanted to do is show the difference between the condenser with the lower development and the diffusion to see if we can get a little bit closer once we get to uh, a lower contrast negative on the higher contrast light versus the higher contrast negative on the lower contrast light. Here is my two filter with diffusion, two filter with lower development on the condenser. And there's still a bit of a contrast difference. Of course, I don't have a hard and fast uh, time to lower the development on that negative to equal the diffusion here. I use 15%. I could not find the document from Kodak that said 15%. I feel like it was an older um, older manual that they had. 
but for some reason, uh, all I can find is just saying lower your development, but not an amount. So it starts to get there. Um, it, this is still a little bit higher contrast, but I feel we could probably match had we lowered it even more, maybe 20% instead of 15. So let's look at the zeros, uh, the double zeros of the same thing. All right, here we have double zeros of both, and quite frankly, they really are just about identical. There's very little difference between these two at the extreme low end of the filter range. The only place I see much of any contrast difference is maybe in this area of the grass. This is a little bit more uh, monotone, a little bit higher separation there. But that's about it. The rest of it is pretty much exactly the same. Okay, so let's look at the fives. Okay, so here's our fives. Again, the condenser is really darkening things, but our highlight areas, again, are the same. So the condenser is really just exacerbating the filter difference. I would say that the light is not filtering contrast in a linear manner for both sorts of lights. I would say the condenser is gaining contrast at a much faster rate than the diffusion. So as you go higher, your contrast increases more and more and more. Um, between the two of these, I would say, had I printed this negative with a four filter, I would probably get more of an identical print to this. So I'm almost gaining a whole, um, whole filter grade with the condenser light even though I've developed the film less. So just an example of what you do. Again, if I developed even less, we might get a closer uh, match between the two. And there we see our results. So clearly the condenser is higher contrast. Is it sharper? Not really. It just creates the appearance of a slightly sharper edge on things. So some people do see that as apparent sharpness. I don't see it really as much of a benefit. Personally, in my work, I have no complaints about diffusion head. But clearly the dust really does stand out. So be prepared for being either more meticulously clean when you put your film in or get really good at spotting prints because that dust is just going to glare at you the whole time. Now, after all of that, I did go through the effort and made a print, let me get the glare off of there, made a print that I'm mostly happy with. I still need some dodging and burning in here, but we did, with the uh, diffusion head, get the amount of contrast that I wanted. So that's it for this week. If you are shopping for an enlarger, that should give you an idea of the effect that you are going to get. Can you develop the film differently and make them look the same regardless of the head? You can, it just takes some effort. So whichever head you have, make sure you are doing your own personal development test to find out how long you need to develop your film to get the contrast you want for the type of enlarger you are using. I develop for a diffusion head. So if I'm going to change to a condenser, then I might need to reduce my, de my development time. So until next time, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you then.